All right, now we're going to go ahead and look at some common real world situations that are modeled by quadratic functions. Um, this is going to be focusing on projectile motion, and we're going to look at that golfer gizmo in just a second that we looked at as a group. Um, so projectile motion is pretty much just a fancy phrase for launching an object through the air, like, I don't know, throwing a baseball, hitting a golf ball, kicking a football, um, or anything that just flies through the air without a motor. Okay, um, and this projectile motion can simply be modeled by the formula h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus v o t plus h o. We're going to get into all that in just a second, but let's go ahead and take a peek back at the golf ball. Okay, so we started with a gizmo in which a golfer uh, was hitting from the ground, and we ended up just kind of beating this thing around a few times. And we tried our best to get it to uh, line up onto the green as quickly as possible. Sometimes we were better than others. And as we were doing this um, a few times, we were able to determine a few key features of the graphs that we're seeing. So let's go ahead and talk about those. First of all, well, there we go. You're gonna notice that uh, as a review, this golfer goes up there and he hits the ball. And what it does is it follows this format right here, okay? We call that a parabola. And a parabola is just simply the graph of a quadratic. And the most simple quadratic we have is something with a squared, x squared, okay? Um, and some key features of these quadratics and parabolas are simple. We have a vertex, okay? In this case, the vertex is a maximum, meaning it's hitting its highest point at a certain time. And then we also have some key features such as the um, x-intercepts. And parabolas have two x-intercepts, okay? And then as we were doing this uh, activity, uh, we were also identifying the y-intercept. Now you'll notice that in this graph, the x-intercept, if we were to think about this uh, on a graph, right? If we were to think about the x-axis and the y-axis, okay? Well, this also has a y-intercept. The y-intercept would be right here. However, as we move this around, we change the graphs of the golfer and we said hey let's go ahead and see if we can make this golfer uh, at a different height so we slid this advanced features and we changed the height and notice what happens as we do that the height of the golfer as we change that becomes a different y intercept so the y intercept changes so in this case uh the location of the golfer is this is now the y intercept right and if we were to hit the ball again, things would change. We hit the ball, there's the ball, there it is. The vertex changes, it's higher, and it hits the ground. It has a different x-intercept, it's a little further out. However, what happens, there's our x-intercept now. There's our x-intercept now. Well, what happens to the other x-intercept? Did it just go away? Well, in the domain of this real life situation, yeah, that it kind of did. However, if we were to follow the symmetry of the graph back, back here, there would be a x-intercept, but it would be um, negative. We wouldn't pay too much attention to it in the course of this problem. Okay, um, so that kind of ran through the basic understanding of projectile motion, and hopefully that helped you all when we were doing that. So now let's go ahead and go back to this um, problem here. It says projectile motion can be modeled by the following formula. It says h of t, and what h of t just means is the height. So any given height at a given time, okay? Uh, t is gonna stand for our time. And going back, we messed with the velocity of the ball. Uh, that is right here, that is the velocity. And that is the initial velocity. And HO is the initial height. 
So VO is the velocity, HO is the height. So now let's just go ahead and apply it. And this is very much like the golfing problem. Um, but we will look at a football. For example, we can use this formula to write a quadratic equation that relates the time t in seconds to the height h in the h in feet of a football that is kicked from the ground at an initial velocity of 40 feet per second. So let's read through that real quick. Um, one more time. We can use the formula to write a quadratic equation that relates the time t in the seconds to the height h in feet of a football that is kicked from the ground at an initial height of, or initial velocity of 40 feet per second. Initial velocity of 40 feet per second. Let's go ahead and write an equation. So initial velocity, which is VO, okay, is gonna be 40. So I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna say, okay, well, H of T, equals negative 16 T squared plus VO, which is 40 feet. So I'm gonna put 40 T plus HO, which is kicked from the ground, kicked from the ground. Well, what is the height when it's kicked from the ground from the golfing activity? We found that was zero, okay? So let's go ahead and go to Desmos and just see how this relates. So going to Desmos and I've typed it in and I've zoomed into the graph, okay? And how does this relate, okay? Well, first of all, it doesn't move like the graph did, okay? Um, but we can still see that right here, we have an x-intercept. We have another x-intercept. And then up here, we have the vertex, which is a maximum. And it is um, showing us a parabola, okay? So what is the vertex? Well, vertex is showing us that it is 1.25, uh, 25. So 1.25, 25, and what does uh, 1.25, 25 mean? Well, the input was time and 25 was the height. So that means the maximum height is 25. So the maximum height is 25 at 1.25 seconds. Okay, well, awesome. So what's our another key feature? Well, the x-intercepts. Well, the x-intercept is our other one. So what do our x-intercepts mean? Well, in the context of our problem, the x-intercept of 2.5 just simply means the ball hits the ground at 2.5 seconds. So the ball hits the ground at 2.5 seconds. Okay, and when did it leave the ground? Well, it left the ground right here at zero seconds, okay? Um, our other key feature is the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is zero, so it left the ground at a height of zero. Well, could I change that? If I come up to the initial height, which is like the golfer, check it out. If I change the initial height to 15, if I change it to 20, you can see that the initial height is moving up or down, just depending on what that number is, and that changes is the height of the football. Um, anyways, I hope that helps you understand uh, the projectile motion equation, as well as understanding some of the key features such as maximum, uh, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and how the velocity uh, affects the way the uh, ball flies through the air.